here is one of my older paintings, and here is one of my more recent paintings. And there are a lot of differences between these two paintings. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a very important difference, paint consistency, using enough paint. I'm gonna walk you through this scene, and we're gonna talk about paint consistency and why that is so important in creating powerful, dynamic, paintings. So the first thing I do is I lay out my drawing and now I'm going to wet down the back of my paper and the front of my paper. And now we are ready for the first wash of the scene. And because this is a scene with a campfire with a really bright light, the first thing I'm focusing on is the very, very brightest part. You know, in watercolor, we're really painting in reverse. So we have to think about our lightest areas first, and we have to build up the strength of the scene until we get to our final values. And I'm using cadmium yellow with quinacridone gold, some really rich, vibrant, warm colors. And now I'm using some lavender and throwing in a little bit of the cooler areas as well. Now my whole paper is damp, and so you'll see I'm getting nice soft edges. In this first wash, we're really just thinking about the vibrant light of the scene, and what is the color of those light areas? Everything else we're gonna paint over again, so I'm laying in those cooler areas on some of the pieces of wood, and bringing that around. When I get to this area around the fire that's a, that's still kind of lit up, I still wanna show the warmth, the glow of that fire. Now I'm using Burnt Sienna and Rose Matter Permanent to really get those warm colors. I'm adding some neutral tint, really going strong. And that's one thing you'll find when you're painting scenes like this where you want the light to be bright. On your first wash, you need a lot of paint, a lot of rich paint, because I already know that this is the brightest part of the painting, but I'm not gonna be able to get there and make it bright unless we have really strong, rich values everywhere else. If we don't have contrast, if we don't have those really rich values, we will never have light in our scenes, the light that we're going after here. I left some vague earth tone here and some coolness up for the sky, and the thing is, I know that I'm gonna need to paint over that sky again, and that's okay. I'm going as rich as I can right now with this paint, knowing that I'm gonna paint over this entire scene again, except for little areas that I wanna leave behind and the bright lit up area. Now here's a little thing to note about this campfire. See right here, I painted around this bright light. I'm taking a damp, clean brush and lifting off some of the areas around there. I wanted a nice soft edge around that flame. And if there's any little highlights and things I wanna lift out, now's a good time to do that because the paper is still nice and damp. And after I've tweaked that a little bit, this is what the first wash of the scene looks like. Again, the focus is on this bright area of light, laying in those lightest values. I know that all of this back here is gonna get a lot darker. And after the paper has dried completely, this is what we are left with. And now I'm gonna start at the top of the sky. So I'm starting at the top of the paper and I'm using some lavender and some cerulean with some cobalt blue. And I'm painting down here. And what's great about painting another wash for the sky is now I can paint the mountains in the distance and have a nice, lovely, soft, wet edge for those mountains. Really just nondescript, suggesting that there are mountains in the distance. So I have my calligraphy brush and I'm using some uh, burnt sienna with some lavender. There's a little bit of warmth to that and now I'm loading up more coolness. So some lavender and cerulean, cobalt blue, and I can drop that in for the mountains while it's still nice and damp. So here we have a soft little impression of mountains in the distance. This is an important area of the scene. As I work down the paper here, it would be tempting to leave this color as the color of the grass. But the problem with that is the values are just not strong enough. I know that I want the ground to be a stronger value to really show the light standing out. So I'm working my way down the scene and I'm painting over the ground one more time and I'm gonna negatively paint around the campfire. So you can see that little bit of value is already starting to make a difference because the log was a lighter color than the grass behind it. The flames need to be brighter than the grass behind it. By being willing to work in layers like this, I can get to that strength to really start to make this light bright. 
So I have this wash that I've worked down to here. Now I'm working in the darkness of the stones that are around the fire and everything else around the fire to really get up to that strength that I want. As this wet wash meets some of the warmer areas, I'm painting right into those areas with some cadmium orange and other warm colors around the flames. So I know that I want to avoid the brightest areas of the flames and the parts of the log that are reflecting that light as well. And I'm still painting around those logs and building up the strength. And while that's wet, I'm tying in some of the texture of the logs into this wash as well. In the areas of the log that are reflecting the fire, I'm using cadmium orange and some raw sienna. In the areas that are away from the fire that are cooler, I'm using some lavender. So within that shape of the log, we have warm color facing the light, cool color that's reflecting the atmosphere of the scene. And I'm doing the same thing on those other logs as well. And there's some interesting shadow play going on on the face of, or on the tops of the logs and little sticks and things that are darker that can bring nice contrast around the light of the scene. And we're starting to get that nice glow feeling because I've added the warmth of the reflection and painted darker areas around the logs to really get that feeling of light. And I went back and I used a little bit of gouache. There are going to be little things that are just hard to paint around. Little sparks that are flying off the fire, um, things like that. All right, the fire's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is move to the background. And the background is still a little bit damp, but that's okay. I'm using my calligraphy brush and a good thick amount of paint. So we're talking about paint consistency consistency today. This would be probably the equivalent of a thick cream paint, almost a dry brush, but a lot of paint and less water to get these broken marks on the paper. And those trees do a nice job of bringing a little more interest to the middle ground of the scene, creating a feeling of distance between the soft nondescript mountain and the harder edge of the tree that's closer up to us. Now we are down to just a few little finishing touches and I want enough interest to pull this area forward and let the rest of it sit in the background. So a little more darks on some of the stones and around the key areas of the fire. You could kind of play with this stuff all day, but when it starts to create an impression, when I feel like it's close enough, I want to stop because when I just labor on it and labor on it, it's not going to end up looking good. So I needed a few more little darks on some of the trees and I'm done with the little highlights on the fire. And that is a look at the finished painting. When students push through and they use really rich paint, we can move from values that are weak, like this, where the light is vague and undescript, to paintings like this that are a lot more dynamic and that can catch your eye. The next time that you are mixing, make sure that you're using enough paint to really push those values and create a powerful, dynamic scene. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.